performance time Come on and run some tests We're going to find a memory leak I've got no friends but virtual users Soap test never ran its performance time Hello and welcome to Performance Time, the show where we look at the basics of performance testing with fresh eyes and the joy of performance testing never ends. Today, how do load testing tools work? Well, the reality is that it's just dark magic. No one knows how they work and that is the end of the episode. See you next time. But seriously, how do they work? What's it all about? I'm gonna talk about how they work from a very high level. And to do that, I'm going to use a metaphor. And I have to do a shout out to all of those poor people at uh, Assurity Consulting and TDC who went through my introduction to performance testing training course. You will have seen this uh, analogy before. So let's say that I, Stephen Townsend, have an unhealthy obsession with a particular cafe or coffee shop. And I spend a lot of time observing this cafe and I want to performance test it. I want to see uh, the capacity, the responsiveness, the customer experience of a particular cafe. So uh, how do I do that? How do I go about that? Well, because I have a background in acting, I know quite a few actors. And let's say uh, most of them are unemployed. So they're looking for work and I have a job for them. I am going to use them to performance test a cafe. So how do I do that? First of all, I need a scenario. So yeah, I've got a scenario on screen and it's a conversation between a person, between two people, someone who wants a coffee and someone who's going to provide it. So let's say I walk into a cafe and I say, can I have a, a coffee please? Maybe it's a flat white. For those of you who don't live in New Zealand or Australia, a flat white is just a, it's a coffee with milk. New Zealand has the best coffee in the world. Just want to put it out there. So I might say, can I have a flat white, please? Um, the person behind the counter will say, sure, that'll be $5, because it's Auckland, costs $5. Uh, then I hand over the money. Then there'll be a certain amount of time will go by, processing time, whereby someone goes and makes a coffee for me. And eventually, after a minute or two, that person will come back and say, here you go, here's your coffee, have a nice day. And I go on my merry way, drinking my coffee and with a big smile on my face. So that's a conversation and I'm going to use that as the basis to performance test, to load test this cafe. So what do I do? I call up all my active friends who are all unemployed. I'm kidding. Not all of them, just most of them. I call them all up and I say, Hey, meet me around the corner at this park. And they all show up and I give them all a bit of paper and on the bit of paper is a script. I mean, actors are really good with scripts. They know what to do with them. And the script contains two things. One is the lines of dialogue, such as, can I have a flat white, please? But there are also stage directions, such as walk into the coffee shop and hand over the money when you are asked to do so, those kinds of things. So I give them all these scripts and I get the actors, maybe 50 of them, to learn their lines. Uh, and, And so they do that, they're very good at it, they pick it up really quickly. Now, if I send them into the cafe now, it wouldn't be very realistic, would it? Because they're all going to ask for a flat white. But why is that not realistic? Well, in the real world, most people don't order the same thing. So I I make modifications to each of these users' scripts. So some of them, uh, the bulk of them is just ask for a coffee, but maybe they ask for a long black or a, a mochaccino, whatever it is. And some of these uh, users that I'm creating, some of these scripts ask for multiple items, maybe a coffee and a muffin. Why would I want to do that? Because it might take differing amounts of time to process that request. So if I ask for a coffee and heat up a muffin, it's probably going to take longer than a coffee by itself. So I do that and now have all these actors ready to go to, to walk into the cafe on my command. Now. I could just let them all rush into the cafe at once and they would completely overwhelm them and there'd be a big queue of people waiting for a, waiting for their order to be served. So that's not really re- very realistic. It might be entertaining for me to look at, but it doesn't really prove anything. So I want to control the rate at which my actors enter the cafe. And I base that on some real world business scenario. So let's say, I mean, I'm obsessed with this cafe. 
and I've been there for a year watching it every day counting the the time in which each, each person enters and how long they go for and I know for a fact that on the absolute busiest day uh, of the entire year they experienced 15 customers within five minutes okay so three customers a minute that's their peak load that we expect so I use that as the basis and I say okay I'm going to control the rate at which these actors walk into the coffee shop uh, and to one every 20 seconds or three a minute that's my peak load and I randomize it a bit so they don't walk in every 20 seconds but somewhere between 20 uh, 10 and 30 seconds for example and randomize it a bit so now I'm controlling the rate at which my actors walk into this cafe and, uh, and ask for a coffee and, and making their orders. So in doing so, what I'm actually doing is doing a load test against the cafe. I am applying load to a, a real physical cafe. And I could sit inside the cafe with a, with a newspaper and just observe what's going on. I could monitor the cafe and how it's doing. How are the people behind the counter coping? Is there one or two of them? Uh, do we have multi-threading or not? Uh, are they sweating or, or stressed out or panicking? And just I'm monitoring the situation and how's it, how it's going. This entire situation is completely absurd. But all I'm doing is showing that I'm using a metaphor for what load testing is and how load testing uh, works. So I can load test a cafe with real people. How does that relate to software performance testing and software load testing? Well, the key thing is it's a conversation. We are simulating a conversation. In this case, between two people. Someone who wants a, some drink and some food and someone who can provide that for them. But in the real world, it's usually a conversation between a person and some kind of web application or system some kind of system that's what we want to simulate but it's still a conversation it follows the exact same structure so in this case we have someone who wants an insurance quote so instead of a coffee they say can i have an insurance quote please and rather than a person there is a system who says sure thing fill out this form and instead of providing uh, money we hand over information in a form that we fill out then some time goes by and instead of making a coffee, the system is making an insurance quote for us. That's cool. And then it hands that back to us. So it is exactly the same structure. It's a conversation. It's a little bit different though, because we're not talking about a person directly interacting with uh, a, a software system. There is something in between, and in this case, it's a browser. So it's actually our web browser, which is conversing with the server, with the system. And most of the time with any web or mobile application, it's talking in a network protocol and using over HTTP. So that's the conversation. So let's say uh, we have a, load a situation where we have an application and there are three users interacting with it, in this case with three different browsers, and it could be our insurance quoting system and they're all making requests and saying oh, I want this done please I want this please and we're sending a bunch of requests in. What a load testing tool does is it steps in the place of the browser so it simulates the network traffic that would be going between a browser and the system and it simulates that in bulk so instead of having to spin up hundreds or dozens or hundreds or thousands of browser instances we just simulate we create threads who simulate that network conversation why would we do that why would why not why not just spin up a bunch of browsers which we do in some cases but why in the traditional load testing tool sense do we not do that it's about resources to spin up a browser the, the cpu and memory constraints around that is much higher than just simulating a network conversation so on any given laptop you might be able to spin up I've experienced sort of 20 to 30 concurrent headless browsers all simulating uh, uh, transactions versus I could potentially spin up one or two thousand threads simulating a network conversation. That it's completely contextual. It depends on how complicated the scenarios are which you're trying to, to drive. So that's how load testing tools work uh, at a very high level. They simulate the conversation that would be had between the browser and the system under test. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> if 
it does it that's all good uh, any questions go ahead and ask and I'll see you next time where we're going to start delving into load test scripting and how that all works see you next time